In this video, we are exploring something called funding limit reconciliation and we will also see how the expense when they get aggregated in a cumulative fashion, they start taking a shape of something called S-curve. So we get more details about creating the budget or determining the budget and how do we reconcile the funding uh, 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 limits with it. So I am taking a simple case. Assuming that we are running a 10 days long duration estimated project which has 2 days of analysis, 6 days of development and 2 days of deployment. So like I am starting it on day 1, finishing the analysis on day 2, one person is working on it. Then I am starting development on day 3 and I am finishing it on day 8, 3 people are working on it and I am starting the deployment on day 9 and I am finishing on day 10 and one person is working on it. So it's a 10 days work, uh, initially 2 days, 1 person working, the next 6 days, 3 people work, so next uh, which makes the total 8 days and the remaining 2 days only 1 person working. So this is how it is. Now when we look for the simplicity sake, I am putting the value of $100 per person as an expense rate per day. So person working on a day 1 and person doing a development, everybody has the same rate. So we are keeping the complexity simple. So if this information I put into a tabular format, I can say that I have a day from 1 to 10 and I am saying that analysis day 1, one person is working and I am spending 100 rupees on it because rate for one person is 100. On day 2 also I am doing analysis, one person working on it and I am putting 100 rupees. On day 3, I am doing development, I am putting 300 rupees to it because there are 3 development, this work is over. Again day 4 development 300 and till day 8 we are spending 300 and again when deploy we are spending 100 and 100. So this is like an estimation per day for this particular project. Now if I put a cumulative number to it, which is simple, just keep finding out till day 2 how much money I have spent. So day 1 plus day 2 makes 200. Cumulatively, by day 3, I have spent 500 rupees because 200 plus 300 makes 500. By day 4, 500 plus 300 makes 800. Day 5, 500 plus 300 makes 1100. So this particular column is primarily showing the cumulative money. So by, by a given point of time, how much money I would have spent because we are working on the budgeting part of it. Now if I put this thing, on a, on a graph that where at a one axis I have a days like 1 to 10 and on another axis I have this cumulative estimate, this cumulative estimate which is coming in the this particular column. So at the end of a day 1 I am done with 100 rupees, so, so 100 dollars, so I put 100 here, one dot. By end of a day 2 I am done with 200, so I put a 200 here. So this is like by end of two days. By end of three, I am done with 500. So I will come somewhere here. So this goes like this. By end of a day four, I am done with 800. Something like this. So by end of day five, I am done with 1100. So day five, somewhere here 1100. So you can see that some level like, like this line keeps coming in 1100. By, day, by the end of a day 8 I am done with 2000. So if I, if I put up a day 8 I am, I am at, at 2000. So something like this. So this is like a, a straight line. And then I for remaining I becomes like this because day 9 is 2100 and day, day 10 it is 2200. So slope is, is reducing. Now this kind of curve may emerge in most of the projects and sometimes it becomes more S. It's like becoming something like, like this, S. Now what is the significance of it? The idea here is initially we might be involving less number of people and that is why in the initial duration of a project, we may spend less money. As we get into execution, we are expected to spend lots of money because more and more three people start working on it. And there are $300 they are spending every day. So our curve goes steep in between. But as we reach towards the end, 
again it is expected to have less number of people working on it because it's just a deployment the main work is already done and curve goes down and that's the kind of a mark we see in our s curve so this is how our cost estimations are going against the, the time so you will see this graph again and again and we will use it for monitoring and controlling purpose as well now the topic comes how do we reconcile the funding limits so as a project team, I am spending money like, I am expected to spend money like this. I may have some variance from this line, but I am spending money every day. Does it make sense that every day I go to the sponsor and says, give me 100, give me 200, give me 500 because I need to spend it today. So your expenses are every day, but you may not request a fund from external parties or fund from sponsors on a daily basis. You may take some money and then you run your project for a while, then you take another money and you run the project for a while. I can give an example of the way I used to stay in hostel. So when I was staying for my studies in a hostel, I have to spend my money on a daily basis. But I can't keep asking my parents to transfer money on a daily basis. So there was a clear idea that in the beginning of the month, I get X amount of money. And that X amount of money is expected to last for a month. And before my month gets over, I get another X amount of money. So that is the same thing we are doing in a funding limit reconciliation for project basis. So we take the money, we run our project for a while and we identify the next milestone. By that time, we get the another money and we run our life again. Now, how does it look in this particular graph? So you may say that, okay, I am in the beginning and there is no rule for it. It is all about your understanding, the, the flexibility of acquiring fund. Uh, many times when I worked as an external project uh, a person, as a contracted project manager and project team, these were our payment terms with the, with the customers. So this funding limit reconciliation were more like a payment term. We get some money at, on a sign off. We run with that money for a while and then we request another money on the milestone. We get that money and then we run our money, uh, our project for a while. So it could be linked with your payment milestone when you are working with in an external project context. So just for, a, for example sake, I say that in the beginning itself, give me the money uh, uh, here on the day one, I need 800. Okay, so it means on the day one, I am asking, give me 800. So I am taking this money till 800. Now this 800 is good enough till day four. So I will say that I have this 800 till here. So give me the 800 on a day one and I won't ask more money till day four. But on day four, I will ask another 2000. So by this, give me 1200 more. So I will reach to a 2000 so if, if I do that it will become like okay on day 4 I get 2000 which is sufficient for some more time something like this so and then maybe on a 2000 on the day here you ask that give me the remaining 200 2200 so that I can finish my project so this is your funding limits so your expense is happening on a daily basis but the request of money inflow is happening on, on a periodic or milestones basis. So when you are determining budget, it is not only about figuring out how are you going to spend your money or how, how, is your, how are you estimating to spend your money overall for your project uh, uh, work, but you also need to figure it out how the money is going to come to you. And how should you balance the incoming money and outgoing money so that project work can be done without, without any blockages related to getting out of money. And you have been doing it as a, as, a, as a student when you study in the hostels or anywhere. This is such a simple concept. Sometimes it becomes confusing when you just see this particular graph, what is this funding uh, limit. So yeah, this is all I wanted to talk about in funding limit reconciliation.